Okay, so this little screencast, I'm going to show you how we can set up QGIS Server backend for Geonode from scratch using Rancher on a new fresh machine. So um, the first thing you want to do is you would go along to the Rancher website and um, look at the compatibility matrix. And they've got these little convenience scripts that you can just copy and paste. So I'm just copying the um, installer script. It will set up Docker onto my freshly installed server. And we'll just take a few minutes to um, fetch all the packages it needs and then install Docker itself. Okay, so I skipped ahead there to, um, to speed things up. And then the next thing we're going to do is install, um, just check that we've got no um, containers running and you should see that we have no images. So we've just got a completely blank Docker installation. Um, so the next thing we need to do is install um, doc, uh, Rancher server. I'm going to create a persistent MySQL store on the machine. So I'm creating a MySQL um, share or a folder for its data. And then I'm running the docker run command here. Now, um, I've just ch taken it exactly from the website, but I will add into the notes there, you should add colon stable at the end of this command line so that it installs the, uh, the stable version of Rancher and not the development version. Right, so now it's going and fetching the Rancher image from the Docker store. And then if we have a look at um, Docker PS again, you should see that we've got one Docker container running now. It's going to take a little while while it initializes itself. So um, when you go and check on your um, web page, just if it's not running yet, just be patient and refresh every few minutes. You'll see that it started putting SQL, uh, SQL data into the MySQL folder. So I'm going to the address of the server now with the colon 8080 on it. And as I mentioned, it's going to take a few minutes to get installed. I've sped things up here, but it might take um, five, 10 minutes even to get everything set up depending on your machine. The next thing you have to do is to set up your access control system for Rancher. So I'm going to be using GitHub and I'm going to um, create a GitHub application. Um, when you do this, it will give you a link there, which says click here and you just click on that link and it will take you to the GitHub application setup page. And you're basically authorizing that um, this application can use GitHub for its authentication. Okay, I'm going to be blanking out some of the password details and so on for the screencast. Um, but basically, you just set up a, a new application. You give it the IP address of the homepage of Rancher. You give it a description, and then the callback will be the same as the um, homepage URL. You can get all this information from the Rancher setup screen, which I'll flip back to now. So there you can see it's giving you the actual content that you have to paste into here. When you do this, it will register a new application. And I've blanked out in blue here the, the private key and uh, the, the client ID and secret. You're basically just going to go and paste them into these boxes provided um, and then uh, save. And now you'll be able to authenticate yourself into your Rancher environment using your GitHub credentials. And you'll also be able to use your GitHub organization groups and things to um, define permissions for other people to be able to log into your website. Okay, so here I'm just approving that Rancher is allowed to use GitHub as, a, um, as an application. All right, once you um, have your authentication enabled, um, you can just go into, like, re log into. Rancher again, and it will show you that it's enabled. I've set it to allow um, the second option for site access, and I'm just adding my organization as well. You don't need to do this step, you could just do it as an individual user. But if you want to allow others to come and manage this Rancher instance, then uh, you could add your organization or just um, usernames of other GitHub members. All right, and now um, what we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, get the installation guide for Rancher for Geonode with QGIS. Uh, I'm going to focus just on the Geonode with QGIS 
part of the process first. If you're interested in the GeoSafe um, system that we've set up, then it's I'll make a separate screencast on how to do that. Okay, so now um, we need to create an environment. An environment is just a um, sort of compartmentalized group of applications that you deploy on um, Rancho, and you can set individual permissions for that environment. I'm going to be calling this one um, GeoNode Screencast. And um, then we'll be adding hosts into this environment. So that this environment basically manages all the hosts that we add um, to it. And again, then you can set the access control at the environment level as well. So I'm going to say my company is able to um, access this environment as well. And then you can go ahead and create. All right. So now you'll see there's two environments, the default one and the, the GeoNode screencast one. I'm going to make the GeoNode screencast one the default environment. One thing you need to just make sure is that when you're adding hosts and things that you do have the right environment enabled so that you're adding the right the host to the the environment that you expect to be using it so okay so now i'm enabling the geonode environment you'll see there in the top left that it's now on the geonode screencast environment the next thing to do is to add a host to this environment okay so um in this demo we're going to be using the same host where the rancher server is running for as the rancher client there are a few little gotchas with safari and um, rancher so i always just reload this page when i first get it for the, for adding a new host and then uh, it fixes the copy and paste line that it puts below for the ip address um, because it's exactly the same as the server i'm just going to copy the ip address here and then just add it into this um, box provided and it will update the copy and paste command line arguments accordingly right and so now i'm going to go and paste this line of code into my terminal And it will start the rancher agent running so basically rancher server will send messages to the rancher agent saying please fetch this container please run this container what have you basically like a way for command and control to happen from rancher server onto that host you can see we've now got two docker containers running and the agent will actually add a few more once it gets going you should take care not to name your um container if you're an advanced docker user for the for rancher agent it will do it itself you can see my host has now appeared in the host list for inside of the GeoNode environment. And you should make sure that there's green circles next to each item in your, um, in your host um, for all the containers it's running. The next thing we're gonna do is add a stack. So a stack is like a, uh, an application which consists of one or more um, Docker, Docker containers. And uh, this is what we've now provided in GitHub. So um, we're just gonna give it a name, Ge uh, GeoNode with QGIS. And you can give it a description and then we're going to insert the docker compose yaml file contents and the rancher compose yaml file contents so i'm just taking it from the raw listing from github here um, i'll put the link in the screencast notes to these actual files so again i'm just pasting the rancher compose um, content into there and now it's going to start spinning up that environment that environment's going to have um, QGIS server, Django, PostGIS, and all the containers that are needed to run a fully orchestrated GeoNode with QGIS server backend. Okay, now you can see everything's come up. And I've, again, I've sped up the, the video. If you try to click on the link, um, you'll see that you get a 400 error. And that's expected. Um, you need to go and make some post setup configuration or uh, post uh, deployment configuration changes here. So I'm going to start with. Um, with a Celery container, a Celery worker. Um, and I'm just gonna go and set the site URL. And I'm gonna use the same IP address as I've been using for the Rancher server and Rancher um, agent um, settings. I'm just copying and pasting it from the URL. All 
All right. So we're doing this on a live running container. So we're going to do a sort of in situ upgrade of the container, but changing some of the configuration parameters. So I'm going to hit upgrade, and then you may need to wait a few minutes while it um, sort of brings down the old container and um, brings up the new one. Um, and you can see that it's now showing upgraded. And now you need to go and say, I approve those upgrades, basically by finishing it. And then it will um, take a few seconds more and then upgrade again. If, if, that pay, if that updating status doesn't change quickly, then just hit the refresh page in your browser, uh, the refresh button. Okay, so now I'm in the, the next um, one, which is the Django um, container. And I want to change some settings here. So I want to go and change the site URL, same as the one before. And I'm also going to be changing the allowed hosts. So this is um, propagated down into GeoNode itself, which is a Django app. And Django has a setting which says which hosts are allowed to connect to your, um, to your server. So I'm going to be adding in the IP address of um, our running containers, our running server. Okay, and then the same procedure, we're going to press upgrade, we're going to wait for the upgrade to be deployed, and then once we've checked that it's all come up nicely, we'll um, then save the upgrade or apply the upgrade. And again, if, um, if the status does not change in, uh, very quickly, just refresh the whole browser page if needed, because sometimes the the upgrading status just stays there and it looks like it's upgrading, but it's actually done. You just need to refresh the page like I've just done now. Okay, so now um, I'm just waiting for the Django to finish upgrading. Okay, now it shows it as upgraded. And now we're going to go and um, finish the upgrade by saying we accept that it's upgraded nicely. Wait a few more seconds, refresh the browser if you need to. And then the last step in the process here is we're going to go and change the Nginx um, configuration to use a port other than the default 7000 port. We want to use it, uh, run it on port 80 so that it's the default web site on this host. So um, you can see there, um, there is the public host port. I'm going to be just changing that to port 80 and then save my changes. Nothing else to do here then upgrade and in the same process we're going to wait while it um, runs through the upgrade bringing down the old nginx container and bringing up a new one on a different port again i'm refreshing the browser because it doesn't always update cleanly okay so still busy upgrading now it shows it as upgraded okay and then i'm going to say finish the upgrade Right, so everything's done. <coughs> if you refresh the whole um, stack view, then you should see that there are green active icons next to everything. If you see any red anywhere, that's bad. You want to try and figure out why it's um, giving you a red status symbol. So now I've clicked through to the website. You can see it's running. This is stock GeoNode installation. Um, and I can log in with admin and admin as the username and password. All right, and you'll find all the standard GeoNode functionality available here. So I'm going to be just uploading um, a new layer here. Just drag and dropping some content in. You can see that I've got a QML and a QPJ file. There's a QGIS specific files. Um, so that will carry up all the QGIS styling onto the server. So that explains the basic process of getting everything installed. Um, I'll make an additional video with some other um, specific things that you might want to do within the Rancher environment in the future. Um, one of the nice things with the setup here is we've set it up for scaling the QGIS backend and um, there's all sorts of other interesting things you can do like deploying other applications on top of this. Um, now, that's the basic workflow that you should be following. If you get uh, any problems, then just contact us um, by email at tim at cartoza.com. Um, and we can try to help you. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you're able to get your Geonode running on your server.